Hey guys, welcome back to Waters Family Homestead. This is Michael, and I just wanted to do a quick update. I was out here checking the garden, which the weeds are still overtaking where the potatoes are planted. I can't tell nothing from it. It's just too, too overtaken. And this ground's so hard, it's probably not gonna grow in anyway, but I'm gonna flip it around, I'm gonna show you the corn. I was just counting ears on the first row. I've got two rows, you know, 60, 80 feet. I can't remember. I think it's about 80 feet long. And I got halfway down this first row here counting. And I got halfway down to where the sprinkler is. And I'd already counted <laughs> well over 30 ears of corn. So I'd be willing to bet I'm going to have somewhere around 80 to 100 ears off of those two long rows of corn when they're done there's only one or two that mike could use picking right now but it actually lasts a few more days so i'm gonna wait so i can pick you know more than one or two at the time but you see the rest of the garden with potatoes were i mean there's weeds just everywhere so i'm gonna leave that alone till i start seeing the plant die back and see if uh i can't harvest some i don't know I, I know next year it's going to be raised beds. I'm not doing it in that garden if I got to fight the weeds like that and it's hard ground and they don't want to grow. Blueberries are about gone. There's maybe six or eight left on that bush. The birds have beat me to 85%, if not more, of the berries on that second bush. This first bush, I got probably 90% of the blueberries. So I've got a quart Ziploc bag that's over half full in the freezer. I've been saving them up. And uh, both my daughters like blueberries, blueberry cake, blueberry pancakes, whatever. So that's what I plan on doing with them. But I didn't have a video come out Thursday. This is Thursday evening. I'll show you since he's flying probably over my sister's house. But Anyway, you see the chickens are out here doing well. Those, there's only three or four peaches on that tree and they, I haven't seen them grow. So they either didn't get pollinated or what, but they're not producing anything. And of course I cut the pears way back to get rid of that fire blight. And it looks like I did pretty good at getting rid of it. We'll see if it grows any next year. I'm gonna prune all these peach trees and pear trees, uh, not pear trees, peach trees and apple trees and the nectarine you know, I'm, and the blueberries. I'm going to prune it all back good this winter or fall to try to improve next year's harvest. I'll probably, by then, I'll have the back hoe out and get rid of the old scuppling vines back there or muscadine vines. The uh, There's some rose bush in there, but the privy is just taken over because I just couldn't do it all by myself. But I want to clean all that up and clear it back. Fig trees are still loaded. That big one is loaded with figs all over it but they're nowhere near ready to pick yet they're you know quarter size or a little under but uh either way the garden's not a complete bust which i thought it was there's you know gonna be quite a bit of corn come off there so i know i can grow corn and potatoes are gonna have to be in raised beds there's no way i can fight that hard ground i've still have not got butchering done I say I didn't I didn't post a video this morning Thursday and I'll, I'll probably have this come out Friday but guys I took Thursday off from work um, I hung out at the shop a lot today several hours this morning and several hours this afternoon but my first wife's daddy passed away Sunday evening and uh, that's my oldest daughter's granddaddy he lived a long, full life. He was a pastor the whole time I've known him, which is 39 or 40 years. He was 97 years old. The funeral was this morning, and you know I spent a little time with, with her and the boys. Went to the funeral, you know, did all the stuff we should do when a family member dies or a close loved one passes away. So that's what I've done. Um, 
kind of threw my schedule off this week and I'm not saying that's why I did not post a video Thursday morning, but you know, getting home late and then going once or twice out there to my daughter and kind of hang out with her and the boys a little bit and try to try to spend time with family during, you know, the loss even though he was much older, 97 years old, he lived a very full, blessed life. He was a very good man. He, uh, I never, we was talking about it yesterday at the viewing, you know, I, I've known him for almost 40 years and I've never heard him complain about stuff, period. He was, he, he, he was a man of few words, um, he was in the Navy for a few years when he was younger, and they, they the Navy had a couple people there at the graveside today to play the, you know, traditional taps and salute and flag presentation and all that. But uh, it's a beautiful funeral. He outlived most of his family that he was close with. He's got one sister that survived him, plus his wife and a son. Um, of course, my first wife that I was married to, we were together. 12 years married for 11 and uh you know she she passed quite a few years ago from cancer and uh so she went before him but he still got a son who's 63 and a wife that's 87 and uh you know we we want to spend time with family so that's what i've done Chickens are doing well. I'm going to get off that topic because there's been enough sad stuff around me for a few days. <laughs> but I still got to find time to get these Cornish crossed. <sighs> Taking the freezer camp. Plain and simple. They've got to be processed. They, they are miserable in this heat we've got in South Georgia. You know, this freaking 80, 90% humidity on these mid 90 temperature days, heat indexes of 105, 106, 107. It's just miserable for us. Imagine being a chicken that's 30 days past processing date. They are just so huge that uh, they're miserable. So they need to be processed and I gotta get that done. Unfortunately, I've got a full weekend scheduled. So I'm not gonna be able to do it this weekend. But either way, I just wanted to give y'all a clue of what's going on. Um, I've got several new channels that have subscribed to me and people that have subscribed to, to my channel, and I appreciate y'all. I've subscribed to several newer channels to me, and, uh, you know, it's just good homestead prepping type channels, and, and I really appreciate y'all. So I subscribed and uh, I shared a video a little bit earlier today from one of the channels that I, that I subscribed to that shared a video of another YouTube channel that's struggling, that's had some things happen on his property and, you know, and all, and he's going through a hard time. I shared the video. If any of y'all can help, you know, please help him. I, I believe that we should help one another and, you know, I tried to help a little bit what I could and also share the channel with you guys. And uh, if we can, if we can help a fellow prepper, fellow channel out, I, I think that's what we should do. I think God instructs us to help one another and to love one another. And, you know, sometimes it's necessary. So I was thinking on the way home. About this time, this this is many moons ago. It's probably in the very early 90s or late 80s. I was an assistant manager at a small chain grocery store. And on the way to work, I saw this guy that was had a sign at the intersection through town. Said, we'll work for food. So I've never been big on giving people money. But I went to the store and I got several hundred dollars worth of shelf stable foods and i mean i filled up bags i was i was assistant store manager and groceries were a lot cheaper back then but i i got a bunch and i went back up there to where he was and i had it all in the back of the truck and i opened up the bags and said look you can take anything you want no strings attached 
you can have anything you want to put in your backpack or whatever it was. You know, I don't want to see anybody be hungry. And this guy's like, well, no, I don't really need food. I, I really need money. I'm trying to get so-and-so. And that kind of turned me off from trying to help people. I'm just being honest about it. It turned me off. And later in my walk with Christ and trying to be a better Christian, I learned it's not up to me what people do with money. If you if you own your heart to donate and to help someone, it's it's up to you to do that. What they do with the money is entirely on them. If they use the money for alcohol or drugs or whatever, that's on them. But if it's on your heart to help somebody, help them. So I, that's a hard lesson for me to have learned, the type of person that I am. But that video I shared, I think the guy really needs help. And therefore, I shared the video and I tried to help him a little bit too. So I hope y'all, if you can, you will. If, you're, if your heart is leading you to helping another person that's struggling, we've all been there, please do so. It's not about what the person does with the money, whether it's legitimate or not. I, I mean, I really believe this one is, but it's not about that. It's about if God puts it on your heart to help someone, help someone. Let him worry about what they do with it. So that's what I did today, and I'm hoping some of you will. But I'm going to get off here, guys. I appreciate y'all watching the channel, all you new subscribers. I appreciate it very much. Y'all remember what I always tell y'all. Jesus Christ loves you, and so do I. Y'all be safe. Be prepared.